Let's look at how we make a fission reactor in mechanism. And that is also going to include how to use the turbine along with it as well. I'm going to make this very beginner friendly without any waffle. Now, the first thing you obviously want to avoid is what's happened here. A nuclear meltdown. Who would have thought? Now, this is quite end game mechanism. Generally, you're going to make the fission reactor, which makes a fair amount of power. And the idea is that you make it so that you can make plutonium. Pl plutonium? Yeah. Um, so you can then make the fusion reactor over here. So today we are looking at the fission. If you're not how sure how to make fissile fuel for your fission reactor, then I have got a tutorial for that on my channel. Um, it's made here in the isotopic centrifuge, and this is how you make it. So... We don't, of course, want to have a meltdown. Let's look at how we build these properly. Now, you can make them quite small. This is a fairly small one I've made here. Or you can make them this big. I would say just make it, like, about this big to start with. Um, you know, if you make this and it goes into meltdown, that is a huge waste of resources. But let's actually take this one as an example. So you can make a, a big grid of it using fission reactor casing. The entire bottom row, let's just break in here because this is literally just for this video. Um, as you can see, oops, the whole bottom row is going to be made of fission reactor casings. You can then fill it out with reactor glass um, or just fission reactor casing. Then what you're going to do in a kind of zigzag formation, as you can see here, is you're going to put in fission fuel assemblies. And you're going to put these all the way up until the top what you're then going to put at the top is a control rod assembly so you've got fission fuel assemblies and then at the top is a control rod assembly going on the very top of it and then it's the roof so fission fuel assembly control rod assembly and then the roof which is again reactor glass or casings as you wish so that's basically how you do it you can see here i've done a much more simple one where i've got four on the corners and one in the middle you do need to leave gaps for coolant as you can see here i'm using water as a coolant which is the main coolant i would suggest using so you're going to pump in water in fact you're only pumping in and out quite a few things you're using these reactor ports so apart from the casings the glass and the actual rods in the center all you really need is is ports i'm using one two three four five ports you can ignore this one so we're going to input and output a few things at the back i'm inputting water and using your configurator you can shift click the change what the ports are doing so input only for the water that's the coolant we're going to put output waste on one side and that is actually how we're going to be outputting our nuclear waste with a pressurized pipe and i like to put this to pull and this does need to go into a radioactive waste barrel if you do not put it into a radioactive waste barrel then it's going to be causing pollution see all these green particles this is pollution where i've had a nuclear meltdown and i have done a separate video on how to deal with nuclear meltdowns as well it's in the mechanism playlist that is in the description and pinned comment of this video so we're pumping in water we're pumping out nuclear waste, set to output waste, and we're also inputting fissile fuel. You can use it from a creative tank here if you're practicing, or of course, you can actually make that in the isotopic centrifuge here. Fissile fuel, that's what I've shown in another video in the playlist. So we're pumping in fissile fuel, we're pumping in water, and then basically what's going to do is, this is going to heat up, so if I right click into it, you don't need a controller or anything. You can see I've got my coolant tank. This is my water. You can see I've got my fuel tank, my fissile fuel. I've got my heated coolant tank, which if I turn this on and get rid of that, is going to be filling up with steam. And then I have my waste tank, which if I get rid of that, you can see it's got nuclear waste building up, which is going to be radioactive. So you've got your water coolant going in, your fissile fuel going in, your heated coolant, well, coming out, and your nuclear waste coming out. I do want to say, if this gets blocked up, there could be a, a nuclear meltdown. 
you need to make sure that you are outputting your steam and your nuclear waste. Otherwise, it'll get, you know, stuck and then explode. The same with the temperature. You don't want it to overheat. So you want to make sure that you're building a big enough turbine to deal with this and enough coolant. If you're scared about this, build a huge turbine and a small reactor. TLDR, just do that. The reason I'm not going to go into the real deep specifics of this is because really you're going to use this as a, a, a stepping stone to go to a fusion reactor, which is a lot cleaner and easier to deal with. Let's just turn this off before we have a meltdown. So where is our empty or our heat coolant going to come out of? Well, I'm putting that to output coolant. So you can see on here, input only, output waste, output coolant. So when it heats up, this coolant is going to be turning it into steam. And with a pressurized pipe, you want to output the steam into a turbine. And then the turbine is going to turn the steam into water. And you're going to output the water back in as coolant so it's basically a coolant loop and then you can use the water here that you're pumping in as a kind of secondary way of pumping that in so just to go over that one more time you can make it pretty much as small or as large as you want that's the biggest one here vision reactor casings reactor glass assembly rods these are called fission fuel assemblies zigzag pattern as you can see here on the top put a control rod assembly and obviously the ceiling Output for your waste, output for your heated coolant, which is steam, input for water, input for the coolant that's coming in from the turbine, and input for your fuel. So this is now making um, steam. So let's now go over to how we are going to actually use and make the turbine. And this is where we're actually going to be turning it into power and putting it into our power storage here. Now, making the turbine is a little bit more complex, actually, than making the reactor itself. So we're going to start off here with turbine casings. Now, I'm starting off with a 5x5 five five because it's simple to do. And turbine casings are going to form the basis of your turbine. I've then made this one 8 high. You can make them absolutely huge. Oh, no, look, we've had another nuclear meltdown. That is just not good at all i thought i turned it off but obviously i i didn't and i took the pipes away so it must have gotten all congested well that's what happens guys don't let that happen um so once you've made the turbine casings we're then going to put in the middle a turbine rotor i'm only making mine free high and then you're going to put turbine blades on them it's two for each part and if i actually go up even more what you'll see is that they get bigger and bigger as you get up and it's more and more efficient. So you can make these really big, but I'm just making it free high for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm just going to close this off here because what we're actually going to put above our turbine blades are pressure dispensers like this. So around it like that, you're going to put at the top above it pressure dispensers. And in the middle, so it sits directly on top of the actual rotor, is rotational complex. So we've got our turbine rotor and blades. On top goes a rotational complex. And we're going to surround that by pressure dispensers. On top of the pressure dispensers and rotational complex, we're going to put these. Like this. And these are electromagnetic coils. So we're then going to put on top electromagnetic coils. And then we need to actually vent out the, um, the air. So what I'm actually going to do here is put these turbine vents like this. The more vents, the better, so it can disperse it. And you can also use these as the output as well here for your um, water. It's going to go on top here as well like this. And then we're just simply going to finish it off with casings like this and in here you can put structural glass it's not reactor glass it's structural glass to finish it off basically so again just to go through that turbine casing on the bottom and edges etc you're going to put a turbine rotor in the middle with turbine blades topping that with a rotational complex surrounded by pressure dispersers 
And then if I just break this all open, so it's really clear what we're doing here. On top of the pressure dispensers and the complex, we're going to put electromagnetic coils. And then around that and on top of it, we can put turbine vents. This is where we're venting out our water and simply cover it all up with more turbine casings. It's a, it's a bit complex, but it's, it's not too bad once you know what you're doing. And it's basically going to look like this, and we can fill it in with structural glass, etc. Now, of course, we have some inputs and outputs to take care of. So we have turbine valve here, and we're going to input the heated coolant from our fission reactor into the turbine valve. And then we're going to have another turbine valve with universal cables, and this is going to output the energy. So we have one inputting the heated coolant, the steam. That will turn, you know, make the turbine start going. And then we're going to output the energy probably into an induction matrix here. And you can see how much I've got stored. If the induction matrix gets full and then it backs up on energy, then your steam gets full, meaning it backs up into your fission reactor. Uh-oh, it will melt down. That is one of the key things you need to be careful of, because if one thing backs up, it leads to a kind of uh, chain reaction to a meltdown. So you don't want to let things back up. If you don't know how to make an induction matrix, of course, I will be showing you um, other tutorials, etc. And that is basically how you make your fission reactor and turbine. Now, hopefully, of course, you did find this tutorial helpful. If you did, in the description, there are playlists to my entire mechanism um, guides. I literally have completed the entire mod in bite-sized tutorials and also full tutorials for beginner, advanced, and end game as well. The next tutorial on the list is going to be an induction matrix. And then we're going to go on to how to do fusion reactors. Generally, you only need um, fission to make your fusion, and then you can move straight on to a fusion reactor, which is a lot cleaner. There's no nuclear waste, etc., to have to deal with with a fusion. But you do need the polonium made from your nuclear waste in your fission reactor to make the fusion. So you kind of need that as like a handover to get going with that. If you did enjoy it, it was helpful, etc., do check out my Patreon. That is also in the description, which really, really helps the channel. Um, as I don't really make any money from actually doing these tutorials, it would be um, really helpful if you would at least consider joining.